when things are new, there will be suspicion of the viability, the veracity, and how they operate. The difficulty would be the change of the mindset. I think we'll have to face it, and or else we'll be left behind. When the ECCB um, introduced or started talking about the cash, we were already thinking about it. Cash will always be there. Um, what we will what we will see is a tilting of the scale, so there will be more digital currency in circulation. The Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, ECCB, was the first in the Caribbean region to put out a full suite of polymer notes embedded with features for the blind and visually impaired. The bank has now made history once again with the introduction of a digital currency, the digital EC dollar. The World Economic Forum opines that over the next decade, 70% of all value created will be based on the digital economy. And hence, the ECCB's venture into a digital EC currency is to ensure that we in this eight member state are present in our future. The digital EC dollar is currently in its pilot phase and forms part of the ECCB's strategic plan 2017 to 2021 which aims to help reduce cash usage within the ECCU by 50%, promote a greater financial sector stability, and expedite the growth and development of our member countries. What is the digital EC currency, this DXCD? Many persons, the first thing you want to know about your money is security, right? So it is a secure, it's very accessible. Accessible whether you have a bank account or not. It's innovative. It's leveraging technology, and it's providing what other alternative electronic payments cannot provide, which is real-time settlement. The only other payment instrument that provides real-time settlement is cash. But we know cash is sometimes cumbersome. You have to have storage. You have to think about the security of it when you're moving around with it. It is costly to move around. And so what we have done is said, what are the pain points for consumers, businesses, institutions? And how can we address the pain points by making more efficient payment systems? And we say money makes the world go round. Well, the speed at which money goes around helps to drive efficiencies into our institutions and into our economy. So if we can have a faster payment instrument that is secure, then we are helping to transform our economies and to make them very much appropriate to drive the growth and all of the expectations and aspirations of our people. COVID-19 has propelled discussions around the digital currency and cashless transactions, not only for hygiene and social distancing reasons, but also for the swiftness, efficiency and comfort of successfully completing business transactions. But is the local banking and business community in favor or prepared for this digital revolution? But I know now it's going to be a very difficult situation because this is a new normal that's coming up and I suspect the world is changing in a new kind of order and I suspect because of COVID this is going to propel this thing forward and I think that's where I'm saying that we, we need to be prepared. How are we going to get prepared is the question that we need to ask and I think that Without the shadow of a doubt, the vendors will have to prepare for that thing there. It's not nothing that you can escape. It's just like if, you know, you have to say, in, in due season, people might say, if they bring a vaccine for whatever, I don't want vaccines, I don't deal with vaccines. But it's say, well, okay, when you have to travel to go abroad, you need to be vaccinated. How are you going to do that? And how are you going to travel? Then you must be get the vaccine for you to be traveled. So in the same way, you want to be in business, you won't be able to go to a store anymore abroad in the United States and just say, take something and go to the cashier. This thing will be something of the past. You would have to have some kind of code or some whatever, whatever, and so on. So I am aware of the situation and how the world is developing. For a matter of fact, certain parts in the world, they, they are very well advanced. In, in, in that regard. So we must, we cannot be left behind. We shouldn't be left behind. We have to come on board and we must join the bandwagon. But I think what must be done, we have organizations out there, the Vendors Association is willing to work with government agencies, government institutions, other NGO organizations, 
and so on, uh, and to try to really see how we can get the vendors to understand that this is the new era that we all have to face. Um, I think um, we have to um, look at the demographic. We have to look at um, the realities of the people. We continue to have a large rural community. We continue to have people who are not very familiar, or a large percentage of the population who is not familiar or a core with the technology. They, in new, when things are new, there will be suspicion of their viability, their veracity, and how they operate. So I think that in, in introducing and moving forward, we have to do a lot of education and information sharing. We have to do a lot of demonstrations. We have to build confidence in the, in the system. Um, the, the, the banking sector sometimes gets flack for having um, not really um, reaching out and providing um, to, the, to, to those at the lower end. And also there's always a perception that you know, the larger businesses and the larger financial institutions have an advantage over the small consumer. And so there needs to be that type of um, confidence building, protection, and um, systems to ensure that um, persons are not taken advantage of, that persons are, are able to utilize the system in a way that they understand and not short change. So I think these things have to be part of the package of introduction. And I think um, if we could do that, people will buy into it. There will be some who will um, always be hesitant and reluctant. Yet they will, um, I think, um, with a, a young population, that is um, very progressive, I think we will see it get into the mainstream. When the ECCB um, introduced or started talking about the cash, we were already thinking about it. Because as I had mentioned before, our ethos, our, our, our new positioning tells us that the demographic is, is a younger demographic, a demographic that is tech savvy, a demographic that wants to do business now, that a demographic that is not interested in necessarily interfacing in a banking hall or face-to-face or, or -face environment. And again, it comes in timely because the entire financial services environment in the onset of COVID has changed. Uh, and, and members are recognizing that what members want. We had engaged of quite a few vendors before um, in their personal capacity offering cashless services or online services. And we thought that because, because we, we, we are an institution that, that is so heavily focused on, on our reputation, that, that we, we wanted a partner that, that was reliable and that, a, that had a good reputation in the financial services environment. And when, when, when we heard about it for the central bank, we were very, very excited. We thought, ah, this is the perfect partner because the central bank is, is, is the governance structure of the entire um, OECS and the, the ECCU and we thought what, 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 what better opportunity than to partner with the central bank being the, the largest credit union within St. Lucia and one of the largest within the OECS. We thought that would have been a perfect marriage for our institution. Um, so here came Dikash. So as soon as the opportunity was available, we signed on. This, this is, this is the, the most advanced um, in terms of digital currency. Um, there's something that, about it that is very exciting, and, and which is a um, pay-to-pay transaction. And what pay-to-pay -pay does is that it allows you to transfer money from anybody who signed onto the platform. So there, again, there's no need to go to a bank to do a wire transfer, and, and it's all free, all right? So I mean, what better opportunity for a genre, a, 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 a forward-thinking institution to, to, to really show what we're made of, to understand that, that, that as an institution, we, we are the best, we, 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 we are forward thinking and, and that we understand where the market is going and what our members want. Prior to, to, to this year, which we all know is a, a phenomenal year, um, we embarked on a journey in terms of um, introducing more technology to get our customers out of the bank you know, and to bring the services to them um, because we recognize Time is, in, is of value to everyone, and it, you know they shouldn't be spending their time on a line. So we, we've made enhancements to our services to bring this, the, this, the, the technology to them where they can be out of the banking hall. So when we look at our, our mobile and online banking platforms, 
um, some of the plans we have for our ATMs, it really takes away you know, from the, 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 the queuing. And what COVID has presented us with is an opportunity now to fast track a lot of these developments. Um, so, you know, we, we, we're doing a lot more via those channels. We should be, we should be releasing, offering our customers soon um, enhancements to our mobile and online banking platform where they will be able to do you know, wire transfers from the comfort of their homes, peer-to-peer -peer transfers as well too without having to come into the bank to do the, the necessary debit and credit or you know, etc. That can be done comfortably in paying back a friend, a little loan or family member etc. Um, they, they, they will also be able to transfer funds to any body within the ECCU banking space again from the comfort of their home or, or, or their mobile device. And, and really at this time, you know, it, it's an efficient use of time because it pains me to see the, the, the queues outside the bank, whether it's our bank or any other bank on Ireland or even some of the other utility companies and supermarkets because it's, a, it's really how effectively the people use time. And in this fast-paced world, we all want it now. So, if we can bring those services to customers where they can do these things in the comfort of their home, um, a parent you know, can, can get up at 2 o'clock in the, in the morning and send through a wire transfer for a child who may be at university halfway across the world or even within our own region here at UWE, rather than having to you know, get time off to come into the bank the following day to, to, to take a line and to do a wire transfer. So it's really recognizing the value of importance to our customers and offering them the technology platforms that will facilitate that. The public transport sector has for some time now been working to develop its own cashless payment platforms. Well, over the years what we've had is a lot of robbery um, against the bus drivers as well as the passengers. And based on um, these um, issues or events, we felt it necessary to go into a cashless system. Obviously it has had its challenges in terms of how do we get um, the finance to do that? But presently we are um, at least in discussion with a few vendors and, and investors to see that we implement that system. Um, the benefits to that is the security aspect, um, the comfort, the modernization of the, the sector also um, would be why we are pushing it. But more so because that's how the world is going. And if the world is going that direction, we need to um, go along with it so that um, transportation would be an easy thing for anybody, a visitor, a local, the young people being more computer savvy, would be able to use that system and the bus operator would profit more. It would save them more time. They wouldn't have to go to the bank. They can monitor their, their transaction online, right on their phone. Um, they don't have to carry the cash, the cash would just be there and then they just have to see that it is there and decide how to spend it. Likewise with, with, with the bank, I mean we are currently finalizing um, preparations for a similar solution which, which goes beyond just the, the, the transportation sector and there are a couple other persons, that, a couple other sectors and government agencies that we've been discussing that, that with in terms of providing them with plastic. Because plastic really is the, the ideal means now of, of, of um, you know, conducting business rather than walking with large sums of cash and it also provides you some level of, of tracking of your expenditure. So it's, it's, a, it's a product that we are currently finalizing and, and hopefully, um, well, COVID had, us, had tempered our aggressiveness this year. So hopefully we, we should be able to you know, speak more to that in, in, in the coming year. But in terms of the, the initiative being pursued by the, the transportation sector, um, it's one I think they can still push ahead with, notwithstanding the efforts of the, the central bank in, in terms of the, the Dcash um, initiative. We would have to review it uh, and see which one is best, because we would rather go with a system that has been tried and proven. And we also would want to know we are with a system that has credibility. Um, so definitely I'll, I'll engage again um, the ECCB to see how we can work as partners to effect uh, a change like that. And so it's that issue of trust in the EC currency which gives confidence to our currency, whether it's digital or physical. In a cryptocurrency, no one has that liability or that guarantee.
And that is the distinction. So when you're talking about digital currencies, understand that a sovereign currency from a central bank is completely distinct from a private currency, whether it's in digital form or not, issued by a private entity. With the current ubiquitous nature of cashless transactions, coupled with the introduction of the digital EC dollar, will physical cash transactions soon be a thing of the past? Our intention is not to get rid of cash. No, we want to reduce cash to a point at which we have an optimal level of cash, but it will continue to co-circulate with physical EC notes and coins, with other payment instruments like your debit cards and your credit cards. We're hoping, however, that we'll reduce the use of checks and we'll reduce the use of physical notes and coins. Our objective is to get cash down by 50% and to reduce significantly the use of checks. They're costly. The whole idea of reconciliation and chasing bad checks takes up resources that could be put to more productive use as opposed to transactional use. Cash will always be there. Um, what, we will, what we will see is a tilting of the scale, so there will be more digital currency in circulation rather than the, the fiat currency as we currently know it. And, and part of the reason the central bank gave in, in, in introducing that was one, to, to reduce their cost of operations because the cost of, of fiat currency is, is expensive. The printing, the transportation of it to, to, to the, the, the eight member countries of the ECCU, the security. So as a business, because the central bank is a business, so they've looked at that and they decided, okay, well, we're going to reduce that our operational cost and becoming more efficient by reducing the amount of fiat currency we have in, in circulation and introducing X level amount of digital. When the central bank started this project, they were one of few central banks that globally to un uh, undertake that or embark upon that. And since they've done that, it's about 80% now of central banks globally are actually exploring or at some level, some stage in the process of introducing dig digital currencies. And, uh, and the exciting thing is not only from the consumer side in terms of being able to tr transact, you know, digitally quicker, safer, um, but also from the correspondent banking side and the AML side because with every digital transaction it's traceable. It is not that traceable to, 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 for fiat currency because you know if you're in a questionable trade and you're holding all this cash and you have it stored there, there's no way of tracing it. But once you enter the digital realm, every transaction leaves a, 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 a fingerprint, if you want to call it. And once you have that, it, you, you are then able to trace the sources or the parties involved in a transaction. So it helps with, with, with um, the, the, the fight against AML and, and, and um, also in terms of our great, our great challenge of correspondent banking, it, it will facilitate that because the correspondent banks are really concerned about you know, the AML aspect you know, and, and the customers that we deal with. But in a digital world where these things can be traced, there will be greater um, lapsing of, of, of the, the, the tight stranglehold that they have on us and we'll be able to, to, to transact business better. As we explore the pluses and minuses of embracing the innovation in the financial and banking sector, a few questions come to mind. Will the digital EC dollar and the many advances in cashless transactions mean a reduction in jobs in the financial sector? Will stakeholders embrace the possibilities presented for doing business in the digital economy? And what would it take for St. Lucians to fully embrace this new modality? There will always be a need for tellers because we have our demographics are, 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 are broad. We have the, the, the more senior um, citizens or customers who will still want to come in and interact with a teller. I mean, it doesn't mean some of them are not using the online and, and mobile technology, but some prefer the interaction with, with, with a, 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 physical, a physical body. Um, in terms of the, the, the reduction in jobs, no. What we will find is that the jobs evolve. So with the use of technology, 
we, we can reskill or, or retrain persons in other aspects of operation. So what they would have been doing as a manual basis, that is, that is going to be automated, but some of those skills will be required in other areas of the business, and that is where we will retrain persons to, 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 um, to, to provide those services. For me, um, as an operator, um, I'd rather um, just know that my money is there. My passengers cannot be robbed for finance anymore, for money. They can only be robbed for maybe for their chain or for their phone. I can only be robbed maybe because of my phone or my chain or my jewelry, if I were to say. Um, with the, the digital, that, that's, what it, that's the benefit it, it gives us. Um, the second benefit would be um, because your money goes into the bank um, and now you have to go and get it. It, it means that the bank has a clearer idea of your income on a daily basis. So when it comes to loans, it's, it, it shows a better paper trail for you. And, and from, that, from that aspect, you can, or we can, um, to a certain extent, deal, and, and the bank will be much more happier with us um, going through a system like that. It's about the competitiveness of the region. At the Central Bank, we have established that we want to be in the top 50 in the ranking of ease of doing business. I think St. Lucia is around 93 from 2019. So you're far still from 50, but you are the closest there. Because at the, the other spectrum, we have St. Kitts at 140, Grenada at 147, somewhere around there. So, but 93 is not where our target is. It's at 50. And part of the ease of doing business is what is the architecture for persons to transact in businesses, to get access to credit, to open a business. And it's the digital economy that will allow for this transformation. And so the digital EC currency, the DXCD, is part of this entire framework and vision of an ECCU digital economy. We are not prepared, I can tell you. We're probably almost into, you know, zero percent. Maybe but, but if, why? Why? Why is that? It's because, you know, I think it's a level of people so accustomed of, of you know, that they see their money in their hand, they're counting their money in their hand, they know how much money they're going home with when the day is over. So they're so used to that. It, it, it's, 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 it's almost was difficult for me when I decided that we all could put some money together. I spoke to the people at the banks and so on. They said how much it would cost to, to put up the machine and, and so on, and, and how much all, each vendor must contribute so that they could use the machine. Some people have the view, okay, put up the machine, and then when, when it's up, we'll decide when, when we get a sale and we'll pay for the transaction. And you can't do it so. We wanted to make sure you have enough money to put the machine up. You have to pay for the rental of the machine and so on and so forth. Then you'll get your percentage. Then the bank will take a percentage or whatever and whatever. And this is the situation where we had to deal with. And no one wasn't ready for that. We went around and then people came to the meeting. We discussed the matter, but no one took it seriously. The, the, the very nature of our people says that that, that change happens very slowly. Um, because of, of, of the dynamics around Dcash, everybody will not transition at the, at the same time, right? People will um, transition at, at different times as they gain comfort with the system. And, and, and so persons will have Dcash as well as credit cards because not all merchants will, will, will transfer or, or, or make the transition at the same time. So you still need to have your debit card. So again, I see it as, as a good complementary services. A good bank or a good FI understands the environment and, and, and adjusts the, 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 the products and, 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 and the strategy accordingly. Because you don't work around the cash. You have to work with the cash and understand how your other services can, and products can tie in and use the cash for, for, for growth and sustainability. Well, um, I, I don't really be, believe that um, what we need to do is to convince people. I think we need to demonstrate and to show them how it works and to let them and to explain it in ways that are practical and tangible in how they benefit. Um, we must be aware that we need to um, ensure that we do not create more um, doubt in their minds, in the, the language we use, the terms we use, 
the, um, the, and the manner we introduce it and not to thrust it upon them, but rather to educate, inform and convince them by demonstration, by hand-holding, by giving them simple opportunities to utilize, showing them how in the most difficult times that they experience, how they too can be part of it. Show them how that it, it does not um, take away, but actually adds to their ability to participate in, the, in, this, in this economy. When things are new, there will be suspicion of their viability, their veracity, and how they operate. The difficulty would be the change of the mindset. I think we'll have to face it, and or else we'll be left behind. When the ECCB um, introduced or started talking about the cash, we were already thinking about it. Cash will always be there. Um, what, we will, what we will see is a tilting of the scale, so there'll be more digital currency in circulation.